everybody. Welcome. Happy Wednesday. It is live with beef. I'm Chef Jason. Thanks so much for joining us tonight. I have my wife Annie behind the camera. She is going to be our trusty moderator this evening. But thank you so much to the Colorado Beef Council for having us. We are talking um, Asian street tacos tonight. More importantly, though, we're going to be talking about some summer cuts of beef that are great on the grill because I'm not sure if you've noticed, but finally we've got nice weather and it looks like grilling season is here. So thank you for joining us and hanging out with us tonight for Live with Beef. Now, if you go down in the uh, description of today's live event, you'll find a couple links in there. We have the link to today's recipe, which is our Asian street tacos right there. And then we also have one of my favorite links to share every year. That is my favorite cuts for grilling. Uh, our friends at Beef is What's for Dinner have listed out some of my favorite cuts. So we're going to talk through four of my favorite cuts tonight uh, for summertime grilling because these tacos are Asian steak street tacos. And we're going to talk about a few different steak options that you can use. Now, if you have any questions, you have any comments, or you want to sound off and tell us where you're watching from, please do in the comment section. Uh, Annie will be reading those off to me. We'll make sure that we say hello to everyone. And then a special thank you to all of our Colorado ranchers and producers for raising, growing, and producing some amazing beef that is wonderful in our fridges, freezers, and bellies. Uh, housekeeping notes, uh, restrooms are down the hall on the left. And also, if you are looking for amazing recipes and you're looking for some ways to find our Colorado Beef Locator Map, be sure to head over to coloradobeef.com, cobeef.com. Uh, that's going to be the website that you are going to see everything you need to get you in tune with some amazing Colorado beef. So head over to cobeef.com, and then up top you can click on the cooking tab, uh, and that will give you the locator map or how to find amazing Colorado beef. We've got a lot of ranchers and producers that are selling beef and ready to get it in your fridge and in your freezer. Now, Remember, too, when you buy local beef, whether you're buying a quarter or a half or a whole animal, you're going to get a lot of ground beef. But don't ever sweat that. Embrace that, because I'll tell you what, that ground beef's going to come into play a lot, right? Because you can make burgers and meatballs and chili, sloppy joes, all of those good things. So make sure you work with a local producer. They will get you set up and ready to go. Hey, why don't we say hi to a few people? Let's say hello to a few people, dear. Who is it? We've got Patrick Hunter. Nice. Good to see you, Patrick. Gail, good to see you. TJ Marks is here. TJ, good to see you. That's it. All right. We had a couple more. Very cool. All right. So let's talk a little bit about favorite cuts of beef for grilling. Because grilling season is here. And one of the things I think that is everyone's concern, and rightfully so, uh, it, it's budget. Uh, and I'm, I'm always happy to say and, and proud to say that there's really a lot of different beef cuts for every budget. When I purchase beef at my house, yes, I do look for something that is great for tonight, uh, for really fitting what I want to eat or what I'm in the mood for. Uh, but also because uh, as I've aged and gotten a little bit older, maybe that steak portion isn't uh, just for tonight, I'm also going to find ways to reuse it. Kind of that cook once, eat twice. So when it comes to some of my favorite beef cuts, uh, when it steaks, I look for, oh, this is what I'm in the mood for tonight. But I also look for, okay, if I want to have a strip steak, how can I repurpose that maybe tomorrow for something else? And I think you'll find that these uh, street tacos are going to do just a great job tonight of that. All right, first and foremost, uh, before we dive in and talk uh, steak cuts, we're going to head outside here real quick. I want to show you what I've got going on. So follow me out to the grill. We're going mobile. That's right. We're going mobile. I'm going to show you what we've got on the grill tonight. We are uh, cooking up. Look at that. Some beautiful flank steaks. So the recipe that we're making tonight uh, for those Asian street tacos, we actually went ahead, made the exact recipe that's on there. But look at this. The beautiful thing about this flank steak is perfect for tonight, right? This is absolutely going to satisfy me tonight for tacos, but I'm probably only going to use a third of it. So now look at it. What do I have for tomorrow? I've got some beef for steak sandwiches. I've got beef for maybe I want to do tacos again tomorrow too. But the beauty of this is a nice large piece of flank steak like this. Uh, this was about two and a half pounds uh, is going to satisfy me for a lot of different options. Look at you with the Daddy. fancy camera angles, right? Yeah. Hello, Delbert. Good to see you today. All right. So we're going to go ahead and uh, what do you think? We're pretty close here, right? We are. So we're going to go ahead and pull that off here real quick and then let it rest, and we're going to head back into the kitchen. Look at that. Doesn't that look tasty and delicious? What do you think? Mm. 
I do all right? I do good. Oh, phew. All right, so we're going to go ahead and let that rest for just a minute. Let me get back behind there, and then we'll start talking about uh, some of my favorite grilling cuts. What happened? I'm just going to do those while I'm... Oh, yeah, perfect, while you're mobile. So uh, first thing we have right here is our flank steak. Now, uh, I love buying flank steak cryovac like this. The great thing is I can see cell date. I can also see weights, uh, pricing, all of that, uh, freshness, everything. But your average flank steak is going to be about two and a half to three and a quarter pounds. Think about that when you're cooking for your family of two or you're cooking for your family of four. Uh, I have enough for tonight's tacos. I may also have enough for tomorrow's steak sandwiches as well. I love flank steak because it has a very good texture, has a very good chew and a really good bite. And I don't say it's tough. I just like the firmness. I like that chew. Uh, we're going to show you tonight one of the best ways to cut this to really get that optimal beef experience because if you cut it wrong, you basically have some very long meat fibers uh, that can be stretchy and chewy, right? But if you cut against the grain, we're gonna have really easy, soft, tender, uh, and wonderful to eat. So flank steak is great. Uh, flank steak, depending on pricing, we are at about $10.99 a pound for that, which is really not bad. Now, look at this. This is one of my absolute favorites. This is the flat iron steak, which comes out of the beef chuck. Absolutely love the flat iron. It has just amazing marbling, really wonderful texture, and is just, it's so delicious. Uh, this is choice as well, so you're going to get that moderate marbling in here. Remember when it comes to marbling. Marbling is fat. Fat adds flavor, fat adds moisture. So you need a little bit stronger, heavier marbling uh, sometimes to get a little bit of moisture. This is so perfect. The great thing about this, this goes nice as an entree. Uh, if you want to cut this maybe in half and you have a couple small flat iron steaks, great with potatoes, great with vegetables, slice it and it's amazing for anything. Question? Uh, I have a question. Yes, they you have a question. Really similar. What's the difference? Uh, this is going to come uh, from the chuck area, right? And this comes from the flank or down in the belly area. So uh, two totally different cuts. This is actually kind of hidden in the chuck. This is more of a uh, surface muscle uh, down towards the flank or the stomach area, right? Um, but they, they're wonderful and delicious. This, I'm telling you what, I can't get enough uh, flat iron. You remember the last time uh, we had friends over, I made flat iron and we cut it into chunks and it was great because, you know, a flat iron this size could potentially serve three people. So think about that. Great, uh, cook once, eat twice. Now, what else you got? well, I got some other stuff here. So single serve steaks, uh, you know, think of this. I'm in the mood for a New York strip steak tonight, but I maybe want to also think towards tomorrow. Uh, maybe I'm only going to eat half of this strip steak. You could always cut this in half and get some maybe New York fillets, if you would, right? Smaller little fillets. New York strip steak, beautiful, beautiful. Uh, one of the 33 cuts of beef, uh, lean cuts of beef. What I love about the New York strip, uh, as I'm getting older, and I know I say that, but as I'm getting older, Marbling or fat really affects me differently. Uh, I, I'm not even sure what you're laughing at, but I used to, I wanted ribeyes all the time. Now I know that I can't always handle that extra fat. Uh, it's wonderful and delicious, but I've really become a huge fan of New York's because it still satisfies that craving I have for beef, uh, just a little bit leaner. So this is great. Um, New York strip steaks are, are just absolutely wonderful. What I look for in the steak, obviously I look for that marbling, but look at the thickness of the steak. The smaller and thinner the steak, the faster these are going to cook. But look at this. When you're cooking on a grill or, or your stovetop or cast iron cooking, the thinner the steak, the more likely they are to curl because there really isn't enough substance and weight to keep that steak flat. Excuse me. So uh, minute steaks, as my grandma used to call them, those thinner, thinner steaks, the minute you hit those on the heat, they're going to start to curl. I like a bigger steak because I can first and foremost cook once, eat twice, which is going to be amazing and stretch my uh, budget or beef dollar a little bit. But I know this steak is going to cook perfectly and evenly. So I'm looking at this. Uh, it's nice and level. It's not slanted. So it's a really good cut. I have great marbling. There's no extra vein or connective tissue down in here. I have a little piece of tail right here, a little bit of fat, that's okay. But just an overall really beautiful cut. They did a really nice job trimming the fat on the top. Uh, but like I said, exceptional cut. And this is choice, so you have that moderate marbling. 
uh, which is going to come out great. So many different things you can do with a thicker cut steak too. You can do that reverse sear where you start lower and slower in the beginning process and gradually raise that internal temperature. And then right at the end is where you do that high temperature sear to finish this off. Uh, reverse sear is wonderful. Uh, these also good, go great for those hot and fast uh, cooks as well. And we always recommend when you are cooking uh, steaks and proteins in general to go hot and stay hot. So you wanna make sure that you preheat your grill and get it up to that optimal running temperature. And let's say you're cooking at 450 degrees. The minute it hits 450 degrees doesn't mean that entire grill is 450 degrees. It means the temperature probe is, right? Or the thermometer. So I like to get it to 450, adjust my uh, dials, adjust the gas and then hold it there so that it gives the grill grates a chance to heat up as well. All right, so New York strip steak, absolutely beautiful, wonderful, wonderful cut. And then there's this guy right here. I mean, how can you go wrong with a beautiful ribeye? Uh, the ribeyes are great. Do not ever get me wrong. This is such an amazing, fantastic cut of meat. Beautiful, beautiful marbling in here. I, I, when I pick ribeyes, I'm looking at this muscle here. This is called the LD or the longissimus dorsi. This is the longest running dorsal muscle on the cattle. Um, and the beautiful thing about this LD muscle, look how perfect and intact it is. Uh, it is just wonderful and amazing, has a great amount of marbling in it. And then this right here is what we call the kernel. So I look for a smaller kernel of fat. I don't want there to be such a large kernel that when this melts, the spinalis or the ribeye cap steak separates. I want that kernel to be small enough so it still holds this, the integrity of that steak. And then why did I pick this steak? Right here. I mean, the LD looks beautiful, absolutely beautiful, but look at that ribeye cap steak or spinalis. It literally goes all the way from the bottom, all the way around to the top. This is my favorite cut. When I get a ribeye in uh, a restaurant, that is what I go after first. And I always feel like, if that spinalis is cooked to perfection, I know that steak is going to be pretty good as well. So, um, and then I look at thickness again. Look how nice and thick that steak is. This is going to last. This is a, a little over a pound. So really, really nice job on here. Uh, very well marbled. They did a really good job of trimming. We have a little tiny cut down on the bottom here. I'm not worried about that. Uh, the nice thing about this is this may, this may cook up faster. And then this is my little snack while I'm grilling that no one will ever know or miss, right? But overall, just a beautiful steak. Again, nice and thick to prevent it from curling. On ribeyes, you will also have a curling issue if your kernel of fat is large. This, to me, this is not large. I've seen them a lot bigger and a little more round. This is a little bit thinner, which I think is just perfect. But because this steak is so big, uh, I'm not going to have to worry about any curling. So uh, tonight, uh, in, in our recipe that we're doing tonight, we are going to focus on flank steak. So let me get these guys in the fridge here real quick, uh, and then we'll talk flank steak. I'll say hello to a few people. Yeah, let's say hello. Yep, who are you saying hi to? What? Hey, Randy. Kelly Scoville. Kelly, Jane Randy. Aronson. Jane Aronson. Clay. Delbert Westphal. Hello, Delbert. Love it. Uh, Dylan D. Simone. Oh, Dylan's on there as well. I, um, what happened? I pinned a thing. Just got here. But he's up. Oh, what did you do? Oh, there we go. We're back. You got it? All right. Okay, we're back. Whew, technical, <laughs> technical difficulties. And yeah, right. Okay. So look at this. Here's what we're going to do. We will cut this flank steak out real quick. And again, one of the things you want to pay attention to, I'm actually going to put this on a piece of parchment because I think it will show off a little bit better. You might want to stay close for this. This is probably a good one. You're going to be handheld the rest of the night, right? All right, look at this. So when it comes to flank steak, if you notice the way the muscle fibers are running, you can see them all running. See how they're running? They're running this way. So this is important to remember. Uh, flank steaks only run one way, but just as a reminder, you want to cut against the grain because that will give you the, the most optimal beef experience, right? We want to cut thin. We want to cut on a bias or on an angle so that this breaks apart separately. Uh, if you happen to cut this way, look at how long that fiber is. It pulls, it stretches, and it's like eating a chunk of a rubber band, right? Uh, this way, it's much thinner. It's 
easier to eat and it will help really uh, make this beef more tender. If, if you can imagine that. The way to make this more tender is how we cut it uh, and as opposed to adding tenderizer to it. So as long as we cut it proper, we're going to be in a good place. All right. I've got some uh, zipper bags here, right? So what I'll do is go ahead and take that flank. And we're going to go into a zipper bag just so that this is going to be our holding container once we make our marinade here. Let me switch gloves. Any questions or comments, babe, that we need to address real quick? Hold on, holding. Waiting on questions and comments here. Nope, Nothing? All right. Don't forget, if you have questions or comments, leave them in the uh, description section because even after we're done live, because we're live here today, Wednesday, uh, even if, when we're done live, I always come back uh, and answer your questions and comments as well. So if you're watching this after Wednesday, uh, the 24th. Don't hesitate to leave questions and comments because we'll get back and answer them. Okay, very, very simple marinade. What, what you want to be careful about when you're grilling outside and you're grilling hot and fast is having a lot of sugar in your marinades because uh, what will happen is that sugar will sit on the surface of your beef and then when you transfer that beef out of the bag and onto the grill at a high temperature, that sugar is going to burn. And as you can see here, low sugar so we didn't have any burning uh, we just have a really really nice well marinated piece of meat that's going to have great flavor but it's not going to have any charring so we're going to go ahead follow the recipe and we're going to add hold on i gotta get the recipe over here we have our seasoned rice vinegar we have some uh thinned out hoisin so i just went with a little bit thinner hoisin i uh, am modifying this a tiny bit by adding some sweet chili sauce I know I love sweet chili sauce. And I looked in the fridge today and was like, why am I not putting that in there? We're going to add a little bit of garlic in here. You could add ginger. Recipe calls for ginger. Um, you can add ginger, garlic, whichever you prefer. One is going to be a little more lemony and tart. Garlic's going to be a little bit more rich and robust. And then check it out, your favorite, sesame oil. Mm -hmm. Sesame oil, just a touch. Uh, sesame oil in moderation is really, really good. In excess is bizarre right? It just has a weird taste. So a little hint of it is really nice, some toasted sesame oil. So we'll mix this up real good. Get that garlic in there. Let's make sure we get everything dialed in. So while you're doing that, yeah. Sam Simone wants to know the best recipe for flank steak. Besides this one. You know, um, I'll tell you what, there, there are so many great recipes for flank steak. One of the places you can go is beefitswhatsfordinner.com. Uh, you can go to the top of the website, type in flank steak. It'll pull up a ton of recipes. I love a marinated flank steak. Uh, I like a brine flank steak. And now when I say that, uh, I brine in like tomatoes uh, and balsamic vinegar, something dark. Because if you use a clear brine or a light colored brine, it will actually pull the uh, red color out of the meat, the myoglobin. Excuse me. And it will turn the meat gray. So... Uh, I like, I love a simple grilled flank steak. I just absolutely adore flank steak. Anything you can find with a good marinade, whether it's an Asian style or a tomato based marinade, or even a brine that is in something tomato and vinegar based, uh, comes out amazing. And then just grill it hot and fast. Um, if you have a smoker and you want to add a little bit of smoke to it, supplement that smoke in the beginning. Just because this is a little bit leaner, flank steak's a little bit leaner, you don't want to dry it out. Supplement that smoke in the beginning, maybe 30 minutes of low temperature smoke, 180 degrees, and then take it off, heat your smoker up, or throw it on your grill uh, so that you can finish it off, right? All right, so marinade is done. We're going into the bag, and we will make sure we get everything out of the bowl, okay? So we go into the bag, and then we'll close it up, carefully squish out all the air, like that. And then I just kind of mix this up real quick. The cool thing about it is we're not wasting marinade. If you look at what we did, we have just enough marinade to cover the meat. And then the bag helps it as well. Now, here is something I learned the hard way. It only takes one oops in your refrigerator with leaking marinating meat juice all over the place to get yelled at. So what I like to do is I'll put it in a second zip bag uh, and just to give it a little protection as well into the fridge. So now, minimum six hours for that marinade. Flank steak loves an overnight marinade. So you can do it for overnight, but at least a minimum of six hours to give you 
enough flavor in there. Now we have to get the rest of the prep done for tacos. Let me sanitize my board super quick. Any questions that we need to address, Aunt Babe? All right. Blackburn. Charlene, good to see you. Uh, we Dylan. Dylan. Ah, Nicholas, good to see you. One of my Ace Hardware friends. All right, so taco time. Let's get ready for tacos. One of the things we're doing is, babe, when we eat tacos, do you like a little bit of crunch to your taco? Yeah, we all like a little bit of crunch. So here's what I did that's kind of fun today. Uh, I saw these. I was interested in trying them. So we have a zero carb. Um, sun-dried tomato tortilla. So I like this because I feel like it gives you a little bit more flavor, if you will, um, and just kind of adds a little something extra. So those will be our tortillas for the day. We're going to take some shredded carrots, just some of those convenience carrots we bought at the store. We are going to have a little bit of green onion. So we washed our green onion ahead of time. This will give us a little nice little snap. Yeah, doesn't it smell good? So we'll just do a little bit of green onion. How do you want me to? Right there. No, the other way, the other way is better. better. Nice and thin, just a little bit of green onion. You know, and I think a little bit is great. I think a lot is overpowering. So we'll just add a little bit in there just to give us that sharp snap of the onion. And green onions uh, are really good. Chives are, uh, are good as well, a little bit smaller. I like green onions. I think they're a little heartier in flavor. And then cucumber. So we, we are just going to hit it with all the good stuff today. So we've got an English cucumber. What other vegetables would you put? Um, you, could do, you could do red pepper. You could do green pepper. Uh, radishes would be great in here. Um, bok choy, if you like bok choy, that would be fantastic as well. You could also do cabbage if you wanted to shred maybe some Napa cabbage. Um, that would be great in here. You could shred some green cabbage as well. That would be fantastic. I just... I love tacos that have a little bit of crunch. I really enjoy that crunch factor in here uh, because you have a soft tortilla. You have a, you know, soft meat, if you will, a little bit of grilled texture on there. Grill this <laughs> couldn't, couldn't be any more difficult to get this plastic wrap off, could it? There we go. All right. So next we will cut that up in half. Then I'm actually going to cut it in half again. Here's one of the things that frustrates me about taco garnish. I don't want a taco garnish that's so big that I have to bite it three times to break it down. I want a taco garnish that's a little bit more appropriately sized. So I'm just cutting these. See how small those are? Mm -hmm. Now it's like if I, if I bite into that, it's, it's only one bite. And it will pull out of the taco without leaving uh, all the taco guts on the table, the floor, my shirt, all that good stuff. All right. So we cut these guys up a little bit. I love, I love English cucumbers too. Do you like them? Yeah, especially yeah. with something Asian. So, all right. Add those into our bowl. And then it calls for uh, a little bit of rice vinegar. So we have some rice vinegar that we've added, but it's a lot of uh, acid, right? I'm going to tame it down just a tiny bit. Uh, I'm going to add a little bit of pepper, tiny bit of fresh cracked pepper, just to get... A little something extra in there, different maybe. A little bit of salt. What I'm trying to do is round this flavor out. I don't want the acid to be so different from the flavor of the meat that all you're left with is the taste of acid. I want to make sure that uh, you still get a little bit of um, salt, pepper, well-rounded. You get to taste a little bit of the meat. We're going to put a tiny bit of honey in here. That's a tiny, shh, that's a tiny bit. That's a tiny, stop, it's a tiny bit. All right, then we want to mix this up carefully, right? Want to get that honey into the vinegar, the vinegar into the honey, the salt and pepper season, get everything mixed. What do you think? How's that look and smell? Good. That good? And then we'll let these guys sit for just a little bit, a couple minutes. Mm. The nice thing is, is that honey has a different viscosity thickness than the vinegar. So we've changed the viscosity overall by adding the honey and the vinegar. So it'll help it stick just a little bit better too. But mix that up ahead of time. Now I wouldn't, because this is so heavily acidic, I would not mix that ahead of time. That is something I would do to order, if you will, or right when you're ready to eat tacos, uh, because that acid will break down those cucumbers, will break down those carrots, and it will soften everything. So it won't be sharp and crunchy. 
right? All right, so we talked to grilling cuts. You know what are some of the best grilling cuts. And the cool thing about when you buy local beef as well, uh, one, of the, one of the things is, you know, I said, I said, don't be afraid of ground beef. Definitely not because uh, you, you will get a good amount of ground beef, but there's so many outlets for it from your burgers to chili to tacos to all of that good stuff. Um, one of the also uh, things that's great about buying local beef too is you get to work with the rancher when they're processing to pick out what cuts of meat you want. So do you want uh, chuck roast? Do you want more steaks? How big do you want your steaks? So the nice thing about buying local is you get to pick a lot of the things that you're going to eat uh, or that your family is going to eat as well. So, all right, here we go. Here's our flank steak. As you can see, all the muscle fibers are running that way. That's what we want to make sure we take care of. So we cut against the grain. Look at that. How does that look? Does that look like tacos for dinner? Mm -hmm. I said to Annie today, this morning, I said, hey, um, surprise, you're helping me tonight. She's like, wow, that's fantastic. What's for dinner? And I said, we're having Asian street tacos. And she's like, I'm in. So we're pretty well set to go. So nice and thin. And the cool, look at this, it just pulls apart. I mean, look at how easy that pulls apart. That's because we took the time to make sure we cut it right. Here's my tip. Wow, all, all of a sudden you have this long cut of meat. I will actually turn and start cutting it in halves just like that so I can cut smaller strips. How'd I do? Good. Did I do all right? Okay, tasty. So here we go. Time to build a taco. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Keep, keep focusing on the meat. I have my taco thing I forgot. This is pretty fancy stuff we're doing here. Do, 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 do. This is fancy, fancy, fancy stuff. All right, so time to build tacos. It's my taco holder. That, didn't we talk about this once? <laughs> Dad jokes for days. Dad jokes for days. Did you say bad jokes? Bad jokes? Both. Dad and bad. All right, so I'm just cutting a little bit of parchment in here. This is going to be my taco paper. But I want to show you this. This is super fun. Uh, these are available everywhere. These are just cool little taco uh, holders that are just fun to have. Uh, and the nice thing is you can make tacos. Gives you a spot to hold your tacos. And then guess what? You get to eat tacos. So what I like to do is that. Put that guy right there. How's that look? Pretty cool, right? Good. Who's all fancy tonight? This guy right here. All right. So we'll get our tacos like that. Then what I like to do, add however much meat you'd like in there. Give them a good portion, right? We want to make sure they get their protein for the night. So make them up nice and neat and pretty. Hey, Jeremy Glass. Chef Jeremy Glass is in the house. Jeremy was texting me today about my choice of shoes, i.e. my Crocs, but it's okay. I told him I bought a matching pair. All right, look at this. Come in close. Can you see that? See how nice we have that set? And then I'm going to remix my uh, toppings just a little bit because I actually want to get a little bit of that sweetness out of that vinegar and honey mixture in there. So would any kind of cheese be good on this? I w you know what? Because it's Asian style, yeah. uh, cheese gets a little bit weird, right? So I'd leave it all with acids and sweetness and soy sauce and that type of stuff. But how does that look? Great. Doesn't that look awesome? So there you have it. Not too shabby for taco night here. It's Taco Wednesday, which if you think about it, it's just like Taco Tuesday, but better because it's the second day of the week that we've had tacos. So uh, once again, like we always say, big, huge thank you to the Colorado Beef Council for having us uh, host tonight's live event. And then thank you so much to all of our, our farmers, ranchers, producers uh, for producing that amazing Colorado beef that is in your fridge, freezer, and belly. Don't forget... Head over to cobeef.com, Colorado Beef Council's website. You can uh, click that cooking tab. You can find the Colorado Beef Locator Map uh, and then tons and tons and tons of recipes. Then uh, in the description section below, we have tonight's recipe, the Asian street tacos. But don't forget to click the link for my favorite summer grilling cuts. That's going to be super awesome uh, little handout that you can print 
And that's from my friends at uh, Beef It's What's For Dinner. You can also head over to Beef It's What's For Dinner dot com. Find a lot of great content there as well. I'm uh, I'm actually drooling and I'm finding myself a little bit speechless because pretty excited about eating some tacos. So thank you so much to everybody uh, for joining us tonight. Thanks so much for your comments. And like I said, uh, please leave your questions and comments below. I always come back. We'll make sure we get those answered for you as well. So have an absolutely fantastic evening. Enjoy your summer. Happy grilling. And then don't forget, stay tuned because coming up in June, we've got another amazing live with Colorado beef. I'm Chef Jason Morris. Thanks so much for hanging out with us.